pass merit distinction. Uh, after a request to do this, uh, this is a video to give you a, a bit more guidance as to what you actually need to do to get a pass, to get a merit, to get a distinction. Now, my job is to support your teacher. Your teacher should be giving you some good guidance as to how to do this. I really, really don't want to contradict your teacher and I don't want to contradict what the exam board says either. This is just my interpretation of what you need to do. I have marked a lot of these things and I think I've got a pretty good idea now as to how to do it. So what you need to do to get a pass, to get a merit, to get a distinction. A few important points first. Your teacher cannot afford to be generous when he or she marks your work. Okay, you have to deserve the grade that they give you because um, they will be asked for a moderation sample. There'll be half a dozen of them sent off to the exam board. And if the exam board, if the moderator doesn't agree with their marking, then that will affect everybody in the year group. OK, so everybody in the college could be marked down if they are too generous. So they have to be stingy. You have to make absolutely sure that the work that you hand in is worth a distinction or else they will not give you a, di a distinction if they're doing their job properly. So your teacher cannot afford to be generous. Uh, another important point is that you'll be doing your first assignment very soon in the course. There's uh, four assignments to do in Unit 1 and you've got loads of chemistry and biology and physics to learn. You might have exams in January. You might be doing the, the written exams in end of May, beginning of June. There's an awful lot to do. You'll probably, in fact, definitely be doing an assignment before Christmas. So you start in September. You might even get a couple done before Christmas. You need to start producing quality work as soon as possible. You can't afford to be rubbish at the beginning and get better and better and better. And you'll see why later on, if you don't know already. You need to start producing good stuff as soon as possible, OK? A mistake students often make is they look at the assignment brief and they see, they see these very vague statements here and they think, oh, correctly obtained data using different equipment to construct cooling curves. Oh, yeah, I've done that. Hand it in. Yeah, there's an awful, awful lot more to it than these very vague statements. These are just for admin. They're just for administration, okay? They are for the forms that your teacher has to fill in. If you want to know exactly what you need to do, you have to look at the assessment criteria. And the assessment criteria are in the specification. Uh, hopefully your teacher will give you a list of the assessment criteria. They are allowed to do that, okay? For example, now I'm looking at assignment B, unit one assignment B, which is the cooling curves or the calorimetry, if you like. Now, these are the assessment criteria for a pass. See if you can find them yourself in the specification. OK, these are the assessment criteria just for a pass. Now, to be awarded a pass grade, you have to do all of these. If any of these are missing, then you don't get a pass grade. And if any of these are missing, then if you don't get a pass, then you can't get a merit, you can't get a distinction. So all of these you absolutely must complete. So you must have done all of these. If any of them are missing, then you don't get a pass. Uh, and there must be good evidence in your report yeah, proof that you have done it in your report. OK, good evidence. If you don't get a pass, you can't get a merit or a distinction on this assignment. And whatever grade you get on this assignment will limit the grade that you get for unit two. 
For example, there's four assignments. If you get a pass on your first assignment, then that's it. You can't get higher than a pass. Okay. Whatever grade you get on any of the assignments, pass, merit or distinction, that will limit the grade that you get for unit two. Even if your other assignments are absolutely brilliant, if you get a pass on this assignment, that's it. The highest you can get is a pass. It is so important that you get all of these criteria fulfilled. Uh, a little closer look at some of these particular criteria. Uh, learners will safely check the calibration, blah, blah. You should always include a risk analysis. If there's experiments involved, include a risk analysis. Uh, learners will explore the accuracy of the temperature measurements obtained from thermometers, comparing blah, blah. You, so you compare a glass thermometer and a digital thermometer, and you discuss their accuracy and their suitability for your experiment. Uh, a table of results and a graph, and you do the experiment, and there's, uh, you've done a method for the experiment, and there's proof that you've done the experiment table of results, maybe taken one or two photos of doing it as well. Uh, I've, I've talked ab about the actual experiment quite a bit more in another video. For a pass, you have to determine the rate of cooling near the start. So you just have to do it once. How do you find the rate of cooling from the gradient? Again, I've put that in another video. Look for it. For a merit, there's more stuff that you have to do. Um, I'm assuming that you're going to pause this video, read this carefully, perhaps. Uh, why did you use that amount of solid? Why did you use 10 grams? In, why not 5 grams? Why not 20 grams? Why did you use that vessel? Why did you use a boiling tube as your calorimeter? Why not a beaker? Why not a metal tin? Uh, why did you put a lid on it? Okay, justify your use of equipment. Uh, you need to do a perfect graph. Nothing wrong with the graph. Um, you have to get the rate of cooling, de determine the rate of cooling at three points on the graph. Um, this next one, describe the motion and, and the forces between the molecules when it's a solid and when it's a liquid and when it's changing state and explain it. That is so often missing. For some reason, you know, students hand in work and there's bits missing. Most of my students do listen to me most of the time. Some of them seem to have a bit of a brain disappearance and there's bits missing. And if there's bits missing, as I've said on this video probably half a dozen times already, then they cannot award you that grade. And if that is missing, then you cannot get a merit. You have to talk about the motion of the molecules in the different states and the forces between them and how it changes as the substance solidifies. Uh, your graph should have three sections and in your analysis, you should identify what's happening in each section. Um, now, distinction. I would not award a distinction to a piece of work that a good level of thought and time and effort had been put into. If, you're, if you want a distinction and if you're hoping to go into nursing or an apprenticeship or university or things like that, you're aiming for distinctions, okay? And you need to put plenty of time and effort and thought into your work and you produce a quality piece of work. Uh, most of the distinction criteria, if you study them, are actually in the evaluation, which is at the end of the report. So you've got to do a good evaluation. It's got to be at least a couple of size, sides, font size 11, plenty of detail, everything in there that needs to be in there. Okay. Um, there's another point here, which is they will be able to use the cooling curves of a substance to evaluate how close their values are for the melting points to literature, class values, 
uh, and explaining the differences between them. What I would expect to see is you've got your values for the melting point of stearic acid and paraffin wax. Uh, now put that in a table with values that a couple of other groups got. Uh, and you've looked up the values on the internet and you put that in the table as well uh, so that you can see the differences between them and you discuss the differences between them and you use those values to judge how accurate your answers were. Okay, so good job of the evaluation if you want a distinction. Here's a suggested structure for the report. I would have a title page uh, and an introduction. You know, in this assignment, we have been asked to blah, blah, blah. On the assignment brief, you'll actually be given a context. You work for a such and such company and you have been asked to blah, blah. That might help you with the introduction. For each experiment, method, results table, graph, analysis, evaluation. Method, step by step, what you're going to do or what you did. A results table, a graph, the analysis is where you work things out, calculating the uh, rates of cooling, things like that, working out averages. Yes, if you did it twice. Evaluation is when you discuss how good your results are, improvements to the experiments, etc. Look at the assessment criteria, what needs to be in there. Start each section, each big section on a new page, such as method and then uh, results, analysis, evaluation. Start it on a new page. Uh, use subheadings. Don't ramble on. So many times students hand in work, which is, is just like a whole page and they haven't even got a paragraph break in there. It's very, very difficult to mark. It's very difficult to identify if they've done everything that they're supposed to have done. So, you know, plenty of line breaks, plenty of subheadings, include a risk analysis for each experiment. Hopefully you took several pictures, include them with your results. Uh, if you're aiming for a distinction, I'm repeating myself, do a good job of the analysis. Your teacher will use the assessment criteria to mark your work, so make sure you've got a copy of them and they can't afford to be generous. This is very important. The work you hand in must be your own. Even if you worked with two or three other people in a group, you were just in the group to collect results together. Everything else has to be your own work. Okay, don't copy of each, off each other. Yeah, writing the report is an individual exercise. If you hand in the same stuff, if it's very, very, very similar to your teacher, then if, if you've copied it, they might not accept it. If you've let somebody else copy your work, they might not accept it. Uh, if you found something on the internet, don't assume that it's any good. This has happened to uh, at least one of my students in the past. They found this thing on the internet and they just copied it out and they handed it in and it was absolute rubbish. Okay, don't assume that anything you found on the internet is, is going to be any good. Uh, very important, if, if you've got any doubt, if you're not sure, then ask your teacher. Get your money's worth out of your teacher. Uh, the students who do well in my classes uh, nag me all the time. Dave, could you have a look at this? Is this any good? Have I written enough here? Is there anything else I need to add here? Could you have a look at this, please, Dave? Yeah, okay, then, yeah, yeah, great. You could add that bit there, make it a bit better, whatever. Uh, very often the ones that don't do very well are little quiet mice and they never bother me and they plod on in ignorance and they end up handing in rubbish and getting ropey marks, okay? If you're not sure, ask your teacher, okay? Get your money's worth out of your teacher. They'll be delighted, okay? I'm, all, it, I'm never bothered. If a student asks me a question, brilliant because you know I'll get good results yeah because they'll do well ask your teacher if you're in doubt
Okay, I'm not going to do one of these videos for all of the assignments because a lot of the advice is exactly the same. So hopefully it won't be necessary. And uh, good luck, get some good work done.